My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Heart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And today we're going to be talking about the Peony Garden Suite. You can find this in the annual catalog. This is the 2020-2021 annual catalog. It's on pages 82 and 83 in this catalog. Okay, the areas that it covers, love, thanks, and support is how it's labeled over here. Um, we have care and concern. We have sympathy all tied into this kit. So one of the things that I love about the Peony Garden Suite is that some of the more difficult topics um, that we have to craft for, they can be tough to design, but this suite really takes the guessing out of it for you and it makes that simpler. This is classic, it's elegant, it's timeless. If you like the romantic elements, um, you know, if you are going for more of love or friendship or thanks, um, then of course we have like that romantic sort of element going too. The color themes here are petal pink, gray granite, and basic gray. Okay, so those are the main three colors we're gonna be working with. I'm going to be adding in Whisper White. Um, I'm also going to be adding in the color Rococo Rose. Um, that's gonna be an alternate color for me. So this is pretty minimal. Um, and that's great if you like to keep it really simple. I'm going to add in another color and you'll see why. Another thing that I wanted to mention um, whenever you, I'm talking about a suite, that means that you get a certain number of products that are all designed to go together. And on page 82, you'll find the actual suite, the item number for the suite, that means for the bundle of products, or the, I should say the collection of products, and that's one, two, three, four, five, six items. So you would get the bundle, meaning the stamp set and the dies, you would get the designer series paper right here. You would get the embellishments. So you would get these um, dainty diamonds, or no, I'm sorry, uh, what are they called? Elegant faceted gems. You would get the dainty uh, diamonds embossing folder, which is this here. It's not pictured, but you can see it on a piece of paper in the background there on the Whisper White. Okay, so. This is the Dainty Diamonds um, 3D embossing folder. You get the Shimmer Ribbon in the gray granite. You also get the Square Vellum doilies, which I'll find those in just a moment, um, but absolutely gorgeous. This is the stamp set. And for the dies, we actually have dies that will cut out the flower images, but we also have a set of dies that will create a 3D peony flower. Uh, we're not going to be recreating the 3D flower today. We're going to be working with the floral images and the sentiments today. Okay, so I wanted to show you one other thing. So like I said, I'm going to be working with Rococo Rose as an alternate today. But if you are working with Petal Pink, I just wanted to mention this ribbon. Um, if you happen to get, I think it was Magnolia. If you got the Magnolia Suite last year, I think this was in there. Um, it was in one of the, it was in one of the suites last year, but you can purchase it individually now. Um, and that is this ribbon right here. So number 13 on page 161, the five eighth inch organdy striped ribbon. This is actually in petal pink and it is a perfect match. It coordinates beautifully, um, for this kit. I am going to be using the Rococo Rose scalloped linen ribbon number 16 in the uh, Rococo rose just in case so that you know um, when I'm using today I'm going to be adding that in too. Okay so let me go ahead and show you some of these projects. Okay so here are just three examples of cards that I have made from this suite. Um, another alternate element I added was the silver foil cardstock, and we'll be talking about this in a minute. Um, but the impact of that with the 3D Dainty Diamonds embossing folder is just stunning. But we have the um, 
we have the flower, we have the, the stamped and die cut flower, we have the scalloped element right here. Um, we have the love and thanks to a dear friend. Okay, and then um, we have the, uh, what were these called? The gems here. So absolutely gorgeous. Um, and then we have this one, which is really tying more into the grays and the gray theme. Okay, my thoughts are with you. I think that this is one of the most difficult um, sentiments to work around. <laughs> I mean, there are so many different things that you can do, but um, it, can, it can be tough to design for. So that is one of my favorite reasons that we're working with the suite today. Okay, and then we also have this one here. Um, so we have the, um, the Dainty Diamonds 3D embossing folder in the Whisper White right here. Um, and then we have some layering pieces, the designer series paper, our stamped image, our, um, our vellum scalloped layer, uh, the So Sorry for Your Lost stamp here. Okay, so we're gonna be working with these pieces today. It's pretty much gonna be a variation of these elements. Um, I'll go into that a little more in a moment. This is kind of a chart that we have here for the colors. Okay, so gray granite and basic gray are two of the coordinating colors in the Peony Garden Suite. All right, so this is the ink. So we have the gray granite. We have the basic gray okay. over here. This is the petal pink. Okay, so those are the three colors. And then I also added in the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Okay, and the reason that I did that is because I wanted to color my flowers with the Stampin' Blends. You do not have to do that. You could do whatever your, um, whatever your preference is, but I like the Memento Black because it doesn't smear the ink. The ink stays in place even if you're coloring with blends. Now, you could probably color with blends with these and not have a problem. I haven't tried it. Um, and if you don't, if this is too dark, if you really want this to be more of a gray tone, all you would have to do is stamp off once. So you stamp the initial image on scrap paper and then you would stamp off again and have more of the grayed image. If you, if you do wanna use the Memento Black and just be sure that your blends won't um, you know, smear anything but I just wanted to show you what that looks like in the different colors. I love the way they all look. They all really, um, they look stunning, uh, just depending, like even if you don't wanna color in your flowers, if you just want them to be the color of a stamp. And then I like to look at my sentiments in the different um, inks to see which ones I like um, to give the options there. Okay, so here's an example of the flowers that are, shaded. Okay, so with this, I use the Petal Pink Combo in my Stampin' Blends, which are here. Okay, so whenever you buy these Stampin' Blends, this is, um, <laughs> this is one of the things I had in my starter kit were Stampin' Blends when I joined. Um, you get the light and you get the dark, so you will automatically get the combo of whatever color it is that you choose. So we have the petal pink and light and dark, and we use that to color in the flowers. And then we have the old olive in the combo pack, the light and the dark for the, um, the for the leaves. In the middle, I was just, exper I, you can see I didn't get the stamp um, fully. Uh, so I was just experimenting. I wanted to show you what it looked like if you use the Wink of Stella, okay, which is a glitter pen, this will add sparkle to your projects, okay? Um, if you use that, it actually has a gray tone to it. It almost looks like gray granite, but in um, a sparkle, okay? And this is a lot, okay? So I was really like kind of coloring it in, but you could just do very light touches, like that's on the lighter side of using it over here. This is when it's a little more heavy handed. So you can see how intense that is. 
Okay, but I just wanted to show you, it's not clear. Like it does have a little bit of a gray tone to it, whether you use it light-handed or not. So just wanted to mention that. Over here, I did a combination of Rococo Rose and Flirty Flamingo with the Old Olive for the stems. Um, I wasn't really loving this combo. I mean, it is pretty. Uh, but for me, I really just wanted to stick to the more simpler coloring. So I just wanted to use that as a reference for you. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you. So you, of course, know the three colors that work within the suite. And depending on what you choose to color your flowers with, whether you're going with stamp and write markers, whether you're going with watercolors, whether you're using sponge daubers and inks, whatever it is that you choose. For me, when I chose the blends, I wanted to choose, um, you know, a color palette, basically, that I wanted to work with. So I wanted to use yellow for the center of the peonies. I wanted to use green for the stems. And the leaves. I wanted to play around with the pinks, the pink family. So petal pink is really more of a peachy color. It's really more of like a flesh tone shade. Um, but if you wanted to add in those pinks, then I wanted to see what Flirty Flamingo or Coco Rose look like because I have these in my collection of Stampin' Blends. So what you're seeing is just the, the light and the dark in both tips. So Stampin' Blends are double-sided. Okay, so you have like that little bullet tip and you have the brush tip. Um, so I just used both. So here's the light, here's the dark in every color. Uh, and then we have our grays here. So if you want to see what the difference looks like between gray granite and smoky slate in the blends, you can see it's pretty, it's, it's a difference. Like this is a little bit more of a cooler. This is a little bit more of a warmer gray. And I really did want to try to stick to the gray granite. But I love Smoky Slate for shadows in the flower, and I'll show you that. Okay, so just wanted to go over that with you really quickly. And now let's go over the elements of making the card. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to show you. So let me show you this. So that 3D embossing board that I was just showing you, of course it is an element within the suite, but you have the option to purchase any of the suite items individually if you want to. So you don't want to invest in the whole suite, but you're really loving the embossing folder. I just wanted to show you what this looks like in a bunch of our different um, paper options. So let me show you this because it, it's, it's fabulous. All right, so here's the Whisper White. And you can see, I mean, you can see the image there. It looks really pretty really soft and basic. This is more on the subtle side, right? Um, and there are things that we can do to really bring out that design, like coloring it, shading it with some sponge daubers, which I'm thinking about doing. We'll see if we do that today. Here it is on vellum, which I think that anytime you use an embossing border with vellum, the result is just stunning. I mean, it just, you, you don't, you can see every bit of the design there, okay? It's absolutely gorgeous. Here's what it looks like in our foil cardstock. So if you're getting our gold or silver foil cardstock, this is what it looks like in gold and silver. Think about this for the holidays, the impact that this would have on your holiday cards and projects um, if you're gonna be doing ornaments, okay? This is the red-green combo in the holiday catalog, the 2020 mini catalog. Um, this came out stunning. Look, look at these. So between the silver, the gold, the red, and the green, I'm pretty much all set. I'm being, using that on all of my projects. If you happen to get the brushed metallic paper, I just wanted to show you what these three look like too. This is a petal pink cardstock base. The cardstock that I used for these cards were the coordinating colors. So petal pink cardstock, basic gray and gray granite. I also am using the Whisper White cardstock and I did bring in a sheet of the Rococo Rose as an alternate as well. So this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of pit cardstock. So what I'm gonna do is literally cut it in half. So I'm going to four and a quarter and we're gonna cut. Okay. 
and then we're going to score it at the half. So this is 11 inches. We are going to score it at five and a half. And we have our card base. So that's how I did all of the card bases. So the size that we're looking at here is four and a quarter by five and a half. All of our layering pieces are pretty much around the four inch by five and a quarter. Okay, so let me see if that's accurate. I don't know if I did exactly that. So four inches by five and a quarter. So most of my layers are right around that measurement, but it doesn't have to be exact. If you have a smaller layering piece, um, that's okay too. So it looks like this one is three and a quarter by four. Okay, so just a variation of sizes. Now I also wanna show you how I trim down the designer series paper. So the designer series paper is 12 by 12 in its size originally. So because it's a layering piece and because I wanna have this little frame around it, like you see here, I'm gonna cut it at the same size. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it down to four inches. Now, our designer series paper is double-sided, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut two layering pieces here. I'm gonna cut to five and a quarter. And this side is my marble designer series paper side. And we'll go through all the designer series paper sides. Okay, and then the other side is this beautiful peony, like almost like a sketched look in the basic gray and the gray granite. So I'm gonna cut to five and a quarter again. All right, so then we also have this layer. Okay, we have that layer there. And then we have this piece left over. Okay, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I actually used this as a layering piece in the card projects that we made. So let me just show you. This one is about one and a half by four, okay? Um, I love that little strip in the card projects, okay? So that's the little leftover strip. So just by cutting one strip of 12 by 12 designer series paper, I get three layering pieces, okay? And whether you wanna use all the same side or you know, use the reverse sides, then you could do that. But I, I love how much you can get out of that. Uh, and then, you know, we have another layering piece here, for example. And then this layering piece here, it's almost hard to see, but we have the base here. And then on this card, we also have between the base and the vellum or the layering base, I should say, we have another layer over top. So it's the same design twice, which I think just gives a really pretty look to it. So if you can see those lines there, there it is, that layering piece in the same design. Okay. So those are the main um, sizes that we're going to be working with today. For my sentiments, I'm going to be using the banner punch. So that is also an alternate product that I'm bringing in from outside of the suite. And we're gonna be using it in the one inch size. So I have some Whisper White pre-cut to one inch because that is one of the sizes that fits into the punch. Okay. So let's go ahead and do some stamping. So we have our card base, we have our layering pieces. We'll come back to those in just a moment. For the stamping, let's do the Whisper White cardstock. Okay. 
I am using block D for the middle sized peony flower. I'm going to use my Memento Tuxedo Black ink because I'm going to be coloring it with the blends. I'm just inking this up. I'm just trying to see what that was that I got on there. Okay. All right, so we are working with the Peony Garden Suite. And look at that. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll do one of each of the floral elements. So I don't know if you can see that on camera. Let me bring that a little bit closer. And then this is our larger, um, our larger peony flower. This is like um, a, a, a bigger image. I am using block E for this. And then for the baby, I was using block C, the baby flower. Um, now, this is what I want to say about big stamps. Big stamps can be a little on the, you know, trickier side to get the full impression. I messed this up a couple of times, but I can also be a little bit impatient as a crafter. So when in doubt, get your Stamparatus out, okay? If you have your Stamparatus, if you put this on your Stamparatus, you can do it and repeat as many times as you need to until it's stamped perfectly, and you can do it quickly. Um, I'm already committed to the block, but I just wanted to mention that. If you're working with a large stamp and you're not getting the clean, um, you know, impressions, Get your Stamparatus out because it's just going to make your life a whole lot easier. The Stamparatus might actually be my favorite tool um, that I have from Stampin' Up. The Stamparatus, by the way, was also part of my starter kit. And I was nervous when I joined, um, and I shouldn't have been. It was one of the best decisions that I ever made. So I just want to put that out there. I mean, one of these days I can sit down and tell you my whole story but I actually started with the paper pumpkin kits um, just, you know, just as a customer. And then it just kind of grew from there. So let me see where I can do this image. So I'm just gonna make sure that I really press it down. If we don't get this image perfect, it's not the end of the world. I have some backups here since we're on the live. Um, but one thing that you can do one thing that I sometimes do is go underneath right into the center to make sure that I get the whole thing. But like I said, it's okay. If we don't get it. I'm trying not to shake my camera. All right. And we got it. So there it is. Okay. So we have our three floral images here. Now, let me just show you with the dies really quickly. Now, I'm not actually going to die cut on camera because it shakes my table really badly. I am working on a solution to this problem, you guys, I promise. The machine itself is fantastic. It cuts like butter. Um, you can see how nicely these images have cut out. And I am going to do a full demonstration with it, but I have to figure out my, my craft table situation because, you, you know, you crank it. And it just really, really shakes the table and the camera. So for your die cuts here, let me just show you these. Now you can also stamp the leaves, okay, which is what I've done here. So here are some that are already done and they've already been stamped and colored and cut. So those are the dies for those. Um, but what you're going to do when you line these up is you're going to look for I would, I would go for the points. So like your leaf points on all three sides, and then you just slide it over until you get it right. I recommend taping this down with something that's not gonna rip your image or tape it on the very edge so that it doesn't uh, mess with your image. Some people use washi tape, some people use post-its. There are products out there that you can buy. Um, you could take a piece of tape and like put it on your clothes or 
get some oils from your skin so that it's not 100% sticking so that it doesn't rip your image. Um, but I definitely recommend taping it down before you run it through because these are so precise. They're so closely matched to the stamped image that you don't want that to like go off when you're putting it through your machine. Okay, so definitely recommend that. And then it's the same thing. Like some of them, you, you get it like almost immediately. And then some of them, like this one's a little bit trickier. You just have to take a minute with it until you find those points. Okay, so let me see. There we go. So this one here meets this flower here. And then it's just about getting that frame right. Okay. And then you would run that through your machine. Um, I, you would have to cut this piece down. I can't remember how wide the entry is. I think it's like six and a half or seven inches or something like that. But anyway, let's go ahead and shade one of these flowers. So I'm going to do some super basic coloring here. I'm going to use my alternate color right now. I'm going to use my Rococo Rose in the light and the dark. I just loved the way that Rococo Rose looked as a peony flower. Um, so I'm gonna take my light, I'm gonna take the brush tip side, which is the larger tip, and we're just gonna go and start coloring our flower. I am not a professional colorist. You can color however you are comfortable. Um, I just kind of get in there and color. I don't. I don't spend too much time on it. Okay. And then as you get to, you know, to the edges of your flower, you can be more careful, but this is what you're going to do. You're going to get in there and you're going to get all that color in. And then I take my darker color and I go into the shadows. Okay. So I'm going to go with the smaller tip. Now this bullet tip, and I'm going to start coloring into the shadows of the image. And then I'll trace some of the lines of the flower. Again, not saying that this is how you should be shading with alcohol markers. Um, there are many, many colorists and tutorials out there. I would actually like to take some coloring tutorials, put that on my list. Okay, but then once you do that, I go back in with the lighter color and blend it so that it's not such a harsh line. And that just gives it a little bit more of dimension. Okay, and you could spend as much or as little time on that as you want. And then you would end up with a flower like this, which that is just the Rococo Rose. That's once it's dried and shaded and everything and then the old olive stem, okay? So here is another example of where you can see the dark and the light, like the little bit, of, little bits of detail there, and then we have the daffodil delight right in the middle, okay? So just to give you an idea, if you wanna see Rococo Rose next to the petal pink, here's what that looks like, okay? So you can see this one's a lot more on the neutral side, and this will match back perfectly to the coordinating papers and everything. Okay, so let's go ahead and build a card. All right. So we're gonna take our petal pink card base I'm gonna look at my layering pieces here. So let's go through the designer series paper really quickly. These are the trimmed down versions of the designer series paper. So we have this one, that looks pretty. We have this one, look at that. Tone on tone, gorgeous. That might be my winner, I'm gonna put that over here. You can see how beautifully these coordinate 
just to get an idea. That's cool. If I did something like that, I would probably put like a white or a vellum layer in between. I like that too. So pretty. Again, I would I would want like a really thin, maybe like a sixteenth of an inch layer in between that. I like the marble too. That looks good. Very classy. But I am gonna go with the initial layer here. Okay. And then let's just play around with our elements really quickly. So we have the vellum doily. Let's go ahead and add one of those. When you get this pack of vellum doilies, you actually get 24 of them, okay? And that would be part of the suite. So many different things that you can do with the doilies, but they just add a really nice textural and design element to your cards. Okay, and then let me just see. That's looking. Just playing around with the images here. I like that. I, I really love, um, this is very similar to what I just did with the gray card, but I love that same layered paper twice. I just think that that looks so nice. So we have our embossing element in here with our embossing folder. We have our designer series paper. We have our vellum. Okay, and then let's bring in our flowers. So we could do it like right in the center or we could do it slightly off center like we did with this card here. Okay, so here we have a flower up and a flower down. So we could do that again to recreate this card. Okay, very, very similar. We can get a couple of leaves here. Just build that out. Okay. And then we'll create our sentiment. Okay. So let me take down that banner. Sorry, guys. There we go. Okay. And then I'm just going to take my banner punch. going to feed this through. Okay, so on the other side, you can see where it's hitting the edge there. Now we could just do one side, but I am going to actually cut the banner on both sides. Just going to feed it back through again. Okay, so we have love and thanks to a dear friend. All right, so we can assemble this card and then we are gonna add in some of our, uh, what are these called? The elegant faceted gems. So we'll add in some of the elegant faceted gems as soon as we get this card assembled. So let me just back this train up real quick. I always, um, you'll have to let me know how you guys do cards, but I just assemble everything like piecing together a puzzle um, until I have it the way that I want it. And then I go back and I glue everything down. But you'll have to let me know how you do that.
Okay, and then let's go ahead and add in. So I'm gonna add in the ones that match. I'm gonna add in the petal pink gems. I'll do three, but you could do more. And then you see there's like kind of like a creamy white and it's sparkly. There's the petal pink and then there's the clear. So these are really beautiful. Okay, and so you can do so many different variations on these cards. Um, but I love this particular, um, should we say recipe or formula for a card where you have your cardstock base, you have your designer series paper layer, you have some sort of like a specialty element. So you have either the embossing layer or, or the vellum, or in this case, both. You have your sentiment, your flowers, and then an embellishment. So whether you go ahead and do, you know, the gems or whether you do the ribbon. Oh, let me show you the ribbon if I didn't show you that already because it's one of my favorite things. It's actually in this suite. Okay, so... This is the gray granite ribbon, and you can see this is like a satin finish to this ribbon. Um, I actually layered this gray granite ribbon over the Rococo rose. So typically, this ribbon has like that sort of craft look to it in the center, but I layered this right over top so that it would coordinate better with my card, and I love how that turned out. All right, well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Have a great day, everybody.